I was very surprised today to read that Linda Burney apparently has been sounded out to become the next Governor General of Australia, replacing David Hurley. Surely that can't be right. It is importing Trump-style politics to Australia. Well, it's a little concerning that, for starters, we've wasted $400 million on a referendum and now they're going to do something else, which they probably should have just done all along if they wanted to reach out. But, I look, when it comes to politics, it's all about deals, right? And everyone knows that. And I have a suspicion that the deal was that if you lead the Yes campaign, then we'll give you this role. And because it didn't get up, and I'm, you know, I'm, they all assumed it would, especially with the Labor government, um, and she probably said, well, you promised me this and I want it. And look, the reality is so many people get positions in government, in politics, that are or are not qualified, and it's all got to do with factions and deals and backroom deals, and it's the part of politics I really do not like. Now, look, if the voice referendum was a massive lapse of prime ministerial judgment, making Linda Burney governor general, as is reported today, well, that'd make a whole lot so much worse. I mean, talk about going from the frying pan to the fire. The governor general is there to represent the king, or as I prefer to say, the crown, as a source and symbol of unity that's above and beyond politics. That doesn't mean that former politicians can't fill the role with distinction. I mean, think of the much-mourned Bill Hayden, who's just died. Think of Paul Hasluck, uh, Richard Casey, Bill McKell and Sir Isaac Isaacs. But all of them were potential prime ministers. They were leaders with serious standing. Now, Linda Burney, on the other hand, is the minister who helped turn a 60%-plus vote of support for The Voice in all those polls into a crashing defeat. As she subscribes to the full catastrophe voice treaty truth, the Australian people have now comprehensively rejected. Giving her the greatest position of honour we have, making her effectively our head of state, well, that'd be a slap in the face to the big majority of Australians who decisively rejected her advocacy. Now, I can understand uh, being there in a political office, I can understand the PM's interest, in reshuffling her out of the front bench, given she's such a poor performer. But seriously, kicking her upstairs is not the way to do it. Absolutely not the way to do it. Now, I could also understand the PM thinking, you know, an Indigenous Governor-General, that might be a way to bring the country together and don't labour love their symbolism. But I don't agree with this. If you wanted an Indigenous leader, someone in that job to bring the country together, the Prime Minister should think about Warren Mundy. He's shown he's much more capable than Linda Burney of bringing the country together, much more on the nation's wavelength. He's no less proud of his Australian heritage as his Aboriginal one. He doesn't think our history is a story of shame. And he's got a life story that shows how people can succeed in this country if only they're prepared to have a go. Linda Burney, please not Linda Burney. She's the architect of division and failure.